Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at a program called Minimodem. I may have talked about this in the past. Uh, I know I've talked about other forms of communicating text through sound. So you can do this over radio waves or across a room. If you have a microphone and speaker, you can send messages. There's lots of different uh, formats out there. Some better than what we're going to do today in certain ways. I like Minimodem because it's simple and it can be done in the shell without any GUI interfaces. But other options would be like something like PSK31. And... Um, FSK something or other. So what Minimodem is, and again, uh, if you're on a Debian-based system, it's going to be in your repositories, sudo apt install Minimodem. Uh, once you have that installed, which I already do, uh, you can then use it. You can pass it text, and what it's going to do is it's going to encode it as audio. This is, if you're old like me, you remember the dial-up modem days. This is exactly what this is, although we're just going a one-way communication here. But I can take a message like this. Echo, this is my message, and it gives me that message. Well, I can take that and I can pipe it. Again, using the pipe character means put it into uh, another program. So I'm going to take that message, I'm going to put it into mini modem. I'm going to say dash dash TX for transmit and dash dash ASCII. Again, ASCII basically to, to just simplify as much as possible, typeable characters. If you can type it on the keyboard, it's ASCII, okay? And then we have our rate. The higher this number, the faster the message will be sent but more likely for you to get errors. I'm gonna do 110 here, but you can try experiment different things. Now, you may be able to decode this message, uh, I, depending on the quality. I'm, I'm not recording the audio directly through my system. It's gonna come out my speakers and go into my microphone. I don't know how well you'll hear it, but it's gonna sound like an old dial-up modem because that's basically what it is. So theoretically, if you had mini modem running on your machine listening to that audio, you would have gotten the message, this is my message. Let's hear it again. Right? Not very long for a short little message like that. So if you wanted to decode it, what you would do is basically the same thing. You would run mini modem dash dash rx dash dash ASCII uh, 110. So I'm not going to play it out of my audio and back in. We're going to actually decode something here because this has been used before. This is, this is, inf this is uh, something that's been around for a long, long time. And some of you might be familiar with a band from the 80s called the Information Society. Well, the Information Society, back in the 80s, on one of their albums, actually had a whole track that was just a message in, encoded like this. Again, this is encoding, not encrypting, uh, one of the topics of this series. Um, so if you knew what you're doing, you could decode their message. Well, that song is up on, on, the, on YouTube. And if I list out here, I have an audio wave file here. I can now pass this. Let me play it for you. So I'll just say... MPV. I'll skip ahead a little bit. So it's three minutes long. We can, now I could play that whole audio file. And if you had minimum running on your machine with a microphone going, you could get the message. Again, uh, depending on the quality of it, you could lose characters theoretically if, if the audio wasn't very clear. Uh, but the rate of this song, or this message is uh, 300. So all I'm gonna do is I can pass that file directly to Minimodem. I don't have to go through my microphone. So I'm saying Minimodem dash A dash F for file. I'm gonna give it that file and I'm gonna say, uh, just from information I found online, that it's at a rate of 300, right? So I, now I hit enter and it doesn't even have to listen to the whole thing real time. It can do it faster when it's actually looking at the file that way. Uh, but it's a whole message from the band to their fans if they were able to decode it again. 40 years ago, right? Or 35 years ago. So, very great way you could, again, send this through through radio waves across the room with a speaker, or you could give somebody uh, an audio file. Also, I have, if you look back, way, way back, uh, probably 13 or 14 years ago, I uploaded a music album that I made to my YouTube channel. I actually have a whole separate channel for music now, but on this channel, I have uh, some music and the first track, I had like this the music going, but in the background, I had something similar. It was PSK uh, format, but I had a hidden message there. So you could also be careful because you might lose some of the message, but you could mix this with other audio. You could put it in the background of other audio in a file again. So lots of different things you could do with this. Uh, it, we're, we're taking plain text and we're making audio out of it and we can send that file or the audio over radio waves or across the room to a microphone, uh, different ways. So it, again, this is encoding. Uh, people 
who are aware of it are going to know what it is. It's not encrypted. You could, again, encrypt the message and encrypt it and then use Base64 to create plain text. And then you can send that message across the airways or in an audio file like this. And then the person can decode it, then decrypt it. Again, we have layers of things, but we can send messages different ways. And again, the trick all to all this is eventually getting to that, that plain text of the Base64. So anyway, just a thought, since we're talking about messages and sending messages, I thought I'd throw Minimoto out there. Again, it's not the only option. There's newer options that ham radio has to use. Again, if you are doing this over radio waves, there are laws about what you can and can't do. Look into those. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Filmsbychris.com. Have a great day.